I'm Rich Lund. It's time to raise some monarchs. It's the first day of summer vacation, and as always, I like to start out the right way, so I got up, went for an early morning run. Just showered. And on that run, there's milkweed along the way, and I just checked a few out. First plant I saw, there's already a caterpillar on there. I think it's second or third instar, we'll see. But the point is, they're here. So let's go, check it out, see if he's still there. It's on. All right. Right here. Cool. Okay. I believe this was the plant. He was underneath this leaf. And that little spot right there is where he was eating. So, um, I'm not not seeing him. Oh, wait. He moved. There he is. First monarch of the season. Okay. There he is. In all of his glory. This is way better than having to wait until July. Late July, like last year. Now normally, if I go out on my runs, uh, I've got a jar with me, so that way if I find some eggs, I've got the jar ready to go. And i got a little paper towel in here, so that way it can just kind of help from making a sappy mess down at the bottom. Place it in there, careful not to bump them. And I can, I can push the leaf down on there to put the lid on if I want to, but if I'm going to be doing this a lot during the same day, then uh, I don't cover it up no need to they're not gonna crawl off the leaf so yeah usually in fact when I go running um, I just hold the, the container so that way I don't have it sealed up no reason to right now though I'm on my bike and I got my backpack and I'm kind of interested now to see what else is around here and if there are some eggs in fact waiting for me I like finding the cats but I like finding the eggs even more getting to like take them all the way from egg to adult this is, by the way, really awesome. If you remember last year, I don't know if you've watched my other videos, but last year I found a like fifth instar caterpillar at the Detroit Zoo, which is, you know, I'm around the Lansing area, so it wasn't really my area, but still I was able to take that one and make it reach maturity. I didn't really have to do much. It was about to go into chrysalis. And as far as finding monarchs around here in my Lansing area, I didn't find any until late, uh, late July. It was a real bummer. I had a lot of plans for videos at that time. And I just, I couldn't do it because I didn't have the stars for the videos. This is encouraging. So maybe there are some more around here. But first, before we go check that out, let's talk numbers. So in February, they released the, uh, the count on monarchwatch.org what the uh, hectares were as far as uh, nearby Mexico City where the monarchs roost in the winter, it was at 2.91 hectares. But also, we've seen these kind of bumps before. And if you really look at the overall pattern, this is normal, as far as the normal decline the, the monarch has been seeing. We get a, like a swell in numbers, it gets really, really low, and we think that maybe that's gonna be last year, maybe it's gonna be even lower. And then we get this bump, and then every single time we've gotten this bump, it's less the next year. So. Definitely, I, th I think that there's enough evidence that there's a natural rise and fall of numbers. We're seeing that, but we're seeing also an overall decline. We're not out of the woods yet. We're not even close to out of the woods. Hear that plane? It's like right overhead. <laughs> there's a lot of work to do, and I haven't looked fully into it yet. Uh, I've been kind of waiting for this. But there was a report that I heard that was trying to say uh, milkweed... Uh, lack of milkweed might not be the number one cause of the monarch decline, and that's certainly a possibility. Based on the best evidence we've got, milkweed and lack thereof is was thought to be the number one. A uh, new study came out, though, that there's other factors that might be causing it, other unknown factors, in fact. And so I wanted to read it, and I've been waiting for this to, to check more into that. But also, while I've been waiting for that, MSU, coincidentally, right around here in my backyard, MSU has a new study out too, which is full of 
very hardcore empirical data that it is indeed the loss of milkweed habitat. So these are two conflicting ideas, but I'm gonna take a look and see which one has the better evidence. Okay, let's go see if there's more. So just riding around and found some more plants. Now check this out. If I'm zooming along, I don't wanna say there's plenty of milkweed out here, but there are some plants, and which ones do you actually stop and check? As many plants as you can, right? But what if you don't have that kind of time? Well, something that's definitely gonna get me to stop and look at a plant are little holes in the leaves like this. This probably means a caterpillar might be munching. And there we go. Sweet. This looks like it's about the same age, too, as the previous one. Grab this leaf. Breaking it off just there at the base. And we have not disrupted the little guy. We are up to two. Already June 17th. Two. Sweet. See a little moth there hiding out. That's cool. Whoa. Okay, that's a fuzzy patch of something. Some sort of eggs in there. Not monarchs, though. How about well, this little guy? No. Keep going. I just checked all of these plants and I found nothing. I was willing to pretty much give up. But then, do you see what I see over here? Ah, that's what I first saw. Yep, underneath that leaf, we've got a fourth or fifth instar caterpillar munching away. Wow. So he's been here for a good almost two weeks maybe nice so I'm gonna take him and I'm gonna call it a day mostly because if I put him in with the other two he munches away so fast it's not like he's gonna see the other two and, and avoid them so I don't want to give him too much of a chance sitting in there to do any harm to them so didn't find any eggs but I've found three cats this is already looking better than last year let's head home okay we're back home and let me show you something this here is my home patch of milkweed. Two years ago, when I made the planting milkweed series, these were the plants that I put in here. And I think, what, I had like eight or so? They have definitely multiplied in number. And it's not because of seeds falling. These ones did not produce any seeds the last two years. This is just the root system spreading out and then branching up as what seems like a new plant when really they're all part of the same. Further evidence of this, if I look over here in the lawn, we got that plant and that plant as well. These are just separate looking plants, but really they're all part of the same root system, either the same plant or just two different plants that trace back to here. You can also see, and it's actually already happened, this is my first year that these plants are going to have flowers. So I do have now flowering plants. This year they will produce seeds. And a lot of people have also talked to me about uh, their plants at home and they put their caterpillars on their plants and that's certainly an option that you can do but that's not really what I do with mine. Mine are not for raising monarchs necessarily. What I wanted to do was have plants so that way once they start producing seed pods I have seeds to give to people that want to start their own plants. And certainly because it does give the butterflies an option I do check these for the occasional egg as well. But even if eggs do get on these plants then I still do the same process. I take those eggs in so I can protect them from predators. And then the other thing that I have these for is because in a pinch I can get some easy leaves right here at home. And so if there's a certain day where I need food and it's raining and I don't really want to go out in the rainstorm to collect leaves, I've got some right here in my backyard. And we're going to collect some today for the new cats that I just brought home. Because that fourth or fifth instar, he's definitely going to need more leaves than just what he's munching on now. We'll give uh, the big guy here two milkweed leaves, two large ones. They'll get them started for now. Give them more later. He's still eating. And this will be good for the other two smaller ones. They're not going to go through their own leaves anytime soon. There's one. And there's the other. All right, we're up to three. First three of the year. 
they look to be at the same instar. And it looks like second. Don't quote me on that yet. I want to look a little bit closer at them. Uh, this one I'm looking at looks to me like fifth instar. So there you have it. 2017 Monarch season is on. Now, what can you expect this summer? For starters, it's always been a principle of mine not to talk about what you're going to do, but talk about what you've already done. That way you don't mention a whole bunch of things you want to do, and then when things fall through, it turns out you didn't end up doing a lot of them. But I can say this. I've got a good four different video topics I want to do, and as long as I've got the stars of the show, that's going to happen. In addition, some of you have been asking for certain videos, and I want to get those out. Plus, i got a few ideas of my own. But now's the time. If you can think of a Monarch topic that has not been covered yet, I'd like to hear your input too, and I might be able to make that happen. Maybe what you want to see is something I've already decided I wanted to do. But if you've got a good idea and you want to see me look a little bit closer at that, then we can certainly make that happen. I'll try to. But now's the time. Tell me about it in the comments below. But I do know for sure one of the next videos I want to talk about is look closer at these numbers and look at the two different studies that discuss what is it really that's hurting the monarch the most. Let you know my updated 2017 opinion. So there's going to be some Raising Monarch videos coming at you in the soon near future. And in the meantime, I urge you to check out some of the other videos. We got Indie Labs, which shows you at home science. More of those are happening this summer. And as always, the Tungsten Clan is putting out some scientific hip hop. I don't know if you checked out any of those videos or if it's your kind of thing, but if you want to help me out, spread those videos as far as you can. Let others see them. They're really meant for science classrooms to help learn some science in an exciting way. So if you know of a science teacher or just somebody enthused with it, maybe send them a link to one of those videos. Let them check it out. I'm Rich Lund. I'm just a guy trying to help out some monarch butterflies, and I really appreciate you coming along with me. See you next time.